this here. I'm in San Diego. Do you see this tree? I can't. I can't even get all of it. I would have to get up and walk around. There's a tree twice this size by the Natural History Museum. I've been driving all around you guys. I drove down the um, northeastern tip of California into Nevada, into Arizona. I was in Arizona for quite a while. And then I finally made it, I went to, where did I go? Did I start in Phoenix? I guess I started in Phoenix. Went to Phoenix, went to Tucson, went to Yuma. I'm in San Diego right now and I absolutely love it. It's so beautiful. People are so fit here. I went to the zoo. I've always wanted to go to the zoo here since I was a kid. And I got to go there today. I didn't know, I knew that this the San Diego Zoo was world renowned, but I didn't know how world renowned it was. They have, they had one of the first animal hospitals. I was trying to show you the cobwebs earlier. There's some dusty cobwebs here. But if they're dusty, then that means there aren't any spiders living in them currently. Anyway, they had one of the very first animal hospitals in the 1920s. And they also, I don't want to cry. Uh, they also have helped out a ton of animals. But what I was going to cry about was um, during those wildfires in Australia, they dropped, airdropped a bunch of water and um, eucalyptus leaves for for the koalas there so they wouldn't die. They wouldn't all die. So you can thank the San Diego Zoo for the koalas that are still around despite the wildfires that happened in Australia. Um, there was some other thing that happened. Oh. There are these two bears that were from Yellowstone and they were um, they were rescued because I think their mama died. I saw there are two of them. I forgot one of their names, but one of their name one of them was named Montana. You guys know how important it is to name these animals in zoos. I take issue with the, with zoos honestly because they're problematic, but it's better to name animals in zoos and have their names on display because then they're cared for more. I'm serious. You can't just call it the, the species name. I mean, it's tough because kids are kids and zoos are really designed for kids and I get it. Um, but it was one thing that was funny, but this is a perfect example of what I'm talking about. And I went to the zoo in Tucson also. They didn't have a lot of their animals named, putting that out there. Hold on. I thought that plane was going to be louder. I'm noticing that the cities I actually like generally have a military presence attached to them. That way they're not as, um, brain rot liberal, but anyway. Uh, San Diego has a military presence attached to it. Vegas has a military pre uh, military presence attached to it. I think Flagstaff does, but I didn't go there. Anyway, okay, so I went to the zoo, and I saw the tigers. Well, there's only one target that you could see. Um, and uh, there's this little girl. I didn't even look at her. I drew the tiger. Let me show you my tiger picture. I couldn't draw her super well because she kept moving. I don't even know if it was female, but it doesn't matter. I heard this little girl behind me, and the mom was like, oh look, there's the tiger. And then the little girl was like, oh yeah, there it is. Okay, can we move on? 
But that's how kids act. That's how kids behave. They want to see all the things as quickly as humanly possible. They want to go to the next thing. They want to go to the next thing. They want to zoom through it. I get it. She was asleep. And then she moved. She was looking forward for like a moment. And she moved again. I'm saying that zoos are not necessarily designed for the best well-being of the animals. That is a Kubo. He was eating with his back to the glass that I, I was able to draw him pretty well if I do say so myself. And then this one was good too. I drew the back of her. She was eating also with her back to everyone. <sighs> I mean, zoos are designed with the consumption of animals in mind, basically. They're, they're an animal to consume, right? Uh, they're an animal to view. They're an animal to enjoy from afar. But that doesn't always result in the animal having the best possible life. Or lives, plural. I was thinking, what if zoos were, like, a little bit more private? Listen, I went to the Tucson Zoo. I should have looked it up, but I didn't. I, the whole reason I went there was because I read that you can feed giraffes there. And I got there at, like, 11, but feeding giraffes only happened from, like, 10 to 10.45, so I missed it, but it's okay. Um... What if zoos were, like, not as insane as they are? Because right now they're straight-up amusement parks where the amusement is the animals. I'm not saying we need to take that away entirely, but what if, like, fewer people were allowed to go in zoos? Have y'all seen those videos of people playing instruments for the beluga whales? And the beluga whales listening. It's so cute. There's this one up um, video that makes me cry. It's of a, uh, it's of this girl, and she's at a dolphin exhibit, and she starts like doing a handstand and moving around, and the dolphin like looks at her, and he's like, he wants to see it. He's so entertained. He's like, wow, what is this human doing? You know. I'm actually so bummed I have to go back to Portland. I'm like devastated. It's not gonna be for a little while, cause I still have, I'm still gonna stay in San Diego for a few more days. I'm gonna stay in San Diego for a few more days. I'm going to LA. I'm going to San Francisco. And I'm going back up to Oregon on the PCH. I've been, I've been on the road for 22 days now. I was planning for it to be about a month. It might... That was the airplane. I was planning for it to be about a month. It might be a little bit longer, but that's chill. Um, Somewhere I went in Tucson that was real cool was the Frank Lloyd Wright Center, Taliesin Center. I, it has a weird name that's like Swedish. Seriously, it's like Swedish. I can't remember what it was. But it was really cool. Unfortunately, uh, no one's allowed to play the pianos there. So I'm like, I'm going to write them a letter for real because this is unacceptable. They have a really, really, really cool theater like movie room and theater with a grand piano and I touched those keys just a little bit and it was out of tune. I hate it when people like have pianos just to have them on display. That shit pisses me off and I don't give a fuck. I also went to the musical instrument musical instrument museum in Phoenix which was dope but they only had one piano that you could play and they didn't play any of the pianos that were on display 
which pissed me off because I'm like that is exactly how you get your piano to get broken is by not playing it it's like a car like if you never drive your car and all you do is let it sit in the driveway the battery's gonna die things are gonna corrode it's it's not gonna work as well Duh. but they're like here's this really cool piano that Prince used no one can touch it here's this really cool ornate piano from the 18th century France no one can touch it or use it I'm like okay here's the thing I totally understand they don't want any and everyone touching the really nice pianos got it however the better thing to do in that case would be to have trained pianists who can play the songs that were popular in that era of piano come and play that piano periodically for people to see. Then they can actually enjoy it. <gasps> the tree agrees. Think about how much wood is created from is needed for pianos. Like, that, that piano, that 18th century piano at the Musical Instrument Museum has, I don't know where the wood for it came from, but it came from France, you know, fucking 600 years ago or whatever the fuck. Sorry, like 400 years ago. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Hundreds of years ago, okay? And it and it's still around. And same with same with um, the keys. You guys, my piano, Harold. He's almost 130. He was made in 1895, which is I recently learned. It's actually before New York was officially established as a city, which was in 1898. But my piano is older than that, and he has ivory keys. I wanted an ivory key piano. Before I got him, I was like, man, that'd be really cool because there are ivory keyed pianos that still exist that are old, right? Now they don't, they don't use ivory anymore, they use plastic. But I'm saying we owe it to all the elephants that were killed for those piano keys to make beautiful music on those pianos. That's the least we can do to honor their memory. You know, instead of just having people look at it and take pictures. Anyway, at the uh, Museum of Musical Instruments, they had uh, an experience room or something. I forgot what they, exactly what they called it. But it was like, you can play instruments too. So I was like, cool, sounds great. I went there and it was kindergarten as fuck. They only had like some... They had like some cool gong things you could bang that were from, I want to say Southeast Asia, but I might be wrong. And they had like some kind of xylophone things you could do. And they had some harps. They didn't have an, an additional piano. They had a theremin, which was honestly a huge reason why I even went there. As I was like, because it said you could play a theremin. And I was like, bro, sick. Couldn't do it. I think it requires a lot more expertise than is obvious because they had a picture of a woman playing theremin right there, but like I was trying to play it. You put your hand on one side of it to make the sound and then, and then you pull your hand away and then there's like a stick and you pull your hand away from it to make the notes go up and down. It's a fucking weird instrument, dude, but I couldn't get it to work. I don't, I don't think anyone could because I didn't hear it being played properly the entire time I was there. Hi! There's a dog. There's so many dogs here, you guys. It's great. Anyway. I took a bunch of pictures of the Musical Instrument Museum. And what I thought was really interesting was that so many... Okay, so... It was basically like that experience room there was a piano in like the atrium area like a real grand piano that you could play that I did play and then there was like this giant room with all these sections of instruments from different countries I don't know, but a lot of them were like traditional and stuff or a lot of them were like earlier renditions of those instruments so that was cool um, 
and you had headphones on and you could like listen to whatever it was by like yeah, a little device thing too by like you know pressing the button but that kind of annoyed me because I would much rather hear the instruments played live at least periodically <sighs> I gave them a real a real long note being like make your experience room less kindergarten give us more pianos to play there are more instruments you can play too that you can give people to play one thing that like I just if you you take away literally anything from this video it's the fact that pianos are in fact really hard to damage like really hard like you you basically are gonna have to go at it with like a sledgehammer full force in order to break one and I'm being serious like you fucking I go like this all the time on my keys I bang on the keys I fucking bang on my 130 year old piano keys like that and he has no problem he's golden okay um or you I mean you if you like poured water directly onto the keys or onto the um wires like yeah that's not good but it actually wouldn't ruin the piano honestly it wouldn't I'm going I'm going on about a lot of things look at this beautiful tree this is a type of fig tree it's in San Diego here look at the root the one that's way way bigger than this is in um is over by Natural History Museum like like I said it's so amazing like I was so shocked to see it it's truly something to behold so I recommend you go to San Diego have a visit what I was going to say a moment ago was that I found it interesting that so many different countries had similar renditions of almost the exact same instrument. Like, Germany had an old-timey piano, Sweden had an old-timey piano, um, a bunch of European countries had an old-timey piano, they all had some version of an old-timey fiddle. They all had some version of an old-timey, like, tiny guitar or guitar. And I was like, wow. Like, these are... This is really interesting. And, uh... Like, the Jap, I'm pretty sure. They had something similar to a xylophone. Or, no, they have the little... The harp... The pick thing. Which is actually really similar to a piano and a harp. It's really interesting. It's just interesting to think about that, like, these cultures that didn't necessarily have a lot of contact came up with such similar instruments and that's because we're all connected